do this video which will show you how to write up your dissertation um, using the uh, correct format on Word to help make sure that you gain the most from your presentation marks. So obviously um, if you're coming you're probably in your third year um, putting your dissertation together and you will have read a lot of research journals so you should have a really good feel for what um, a research paper should look like and the types of headings that you will be including. What I thought I'd do first of all is, is share um, my one um, that I use for my masters and then we'll create one perhaps together for you to have a go yourself. So here we go, um, you've, we've got as you can see a cover page here um, which I put together um, and chose my own style, you can choose your own ones and there's usually some specific information that you need to include on your cover page, so for example what the um, research question is or statement um, and whatever is re required of your um, awarding body. And then what should follow is a table of contents and what we want to get to a point that we can use um, the table of contents to move about your um, uh, paper really, really easily and um, make sure that all your page numbers are created really neatly. I'm going to introduce you to a numbered system if you haven't used that already as well. So typical headings um, past the table of contents would be an abstract, which is obviously a summary of all of your uh, research, the purpose of it, um, uh, the approach that you took, the findings and implications. Um, so it's really a sum summary of the research. So you will include that. Typically that doesn't usually get um, recorded in terms of word count so you might want to check with your individual providers on that. Likewise many students provide a dedication and acknowledgement section which is to um, perhaps to dedicate the paper to someone or people and to thank those that have supported you during that journey. Again that's not usually uh, counted within the word count but again I suggest that you speak to your individual provider um, to check that. So typically you'd have an introduction, so here now you can see we've got a numbered system here, um, so that's section one, and within that introduction, for my um, example, I'd use subheadings, and as you can see they're numbered 1.1, 1.2, etc. with the different areas. So it's just to break down um, the writing a little bit further and to help the reader um, absorb that in greater detail. So after you've got your introduction, typically you will have a literature review or review of literature um, and that will include all the background uh, research um, which has led you to um, your next steps in, in terms of your research. So typically there usually is a literature review included um, and, and that's followed by a research design and methodology so uh, sometimes it, you may see the uh, uh, heading as just research methodology or just methodology again you use what's right for for you and for your own work and that suits your own institution but within that typically you'd have the research aims uh, the strategy that's been undertaken information about the participants or sample um, the methods that you're uh, you're using and um, how you'll be analysing the data and perhaps the rigour and limitations of the research which sometimes uh, does can come later in a dissertation if your provider would prefer you to do that as well as any ethical considerations taken. Once um, that area is covered then usually you'll have um, a section on findings. Um, sometimes that will be titled results depending on quantitative or qualitative approaches that have been adopted um, and on here um, I was able to break that down further into uh, headings and that those headings might relate to individual research questions for example that you might have um, just to separate the findings out a little bit more. So you can see there's a number of subheadings here 
And then moving on um, to section five, I've got the summary of findings. Um, quite commonly, this is known as the discussion. So you may, may um, use that as a, as a title instead. And here I've got four different areas and they were the core themes that uh, came, uh, derived from the research. So if you, if you understand what your key themes are, you may want to use those as headings. Uh, and then as a, at the end of the main part of the research, and you have a conclusion as well. Um, and in this example, I've uh, also had a subheading of future research uh, as well, or implications of, the, of, of research maybe on here. Um, this then moves to the next uh, page and here I've got section 7 which is for my references. Uh, references are normally kept on a completely separate page to the body of the uh, dissertation and sometimes students will also add another heading which will be um, appendix um, and which will have hold the individual appendices in there. So that's something else that you may choose to add and that's something that you will discuss with your supervisor. At the end of the contents, then I would suggest that you also, for any tables and figures, that you also include uh, contents for those page numbers for each of your tables. So we'll show you how to do that as we go along. Um, and what should be what we should be able to do is you should be when you're on a PDF, you'll be e easily able to uh, move between sections and the same on the on the word documents so I clicked on the contents page and now what's happened because I sent it up correctly I'll be able to you to go straight to the reference uh, page okay and obviously you follow the how, how you um, reference in line with your institution's guidelines so that kind of gives you an overview and I'm just going to show you how to create those and give you some hints and tips. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up a new Word document. So I've opened up a new blank document. You can use templates um, and, and file open a new uh, template if you want to. I've just gone into a new document here. So um, what we're going to do first of all, um, I'm going to... Uh, get a new cover page on this. So I'm going to insert, as you can see here, I've got cover page, and I'm going to choose one of these options. Now, this is the one that I use on mine. You can use any of the different ones that you uh, wish to. I'm just going to click on that one. So that's created um, a cover page for you, which you just amend and put the information in that you need to provide that your uh, provider expects of you. Sometimes you're expected to put an additional cover sheet on top of that, um, so you might put a blank page before that as well, which might have your student ID, etc. information on, if it's not uh, required on here. So what I'm going to do here now, um, and encourage you to do, is to save the document at this, at this point, um, within your documents because there's nothing worse than creating the template that you can use and then not saving it So I encourage you to do that. What we'll also do is make sure that when you move between um, Certain pages that we use uh, page breaks under insert rather than lots of enters because that always causes a problem So the first thing that we're going to have on here is um, on, on this example is an abstract so what I'm going to encourage you to do is that we need to go to the home um, uh, tab here and move across the ribbon and I'm going to use heading one if you can see that here. I'm going to click on that and I'm just going to type in abstract. Now different computers will provide different colours, different fonts and that's just something that you need to change um, within your uh, editing as well. Okay, so I'm going to move away from that. And um, my next page is going to be the uh, acknowledgements and dedication. So I want that on a completely different page. Let's just scroll up. Um, and at this point here now, as I want it to be on a different page, I'm going to insert and, and page break this now. So I don't have to worry about putting enters in. So when I move my work with, when text, uh, continues to grow it will not cause me any problems um, 
so that's my biggest hint here. And again, I want a heading, so I'm going to use heading one here. It's really important to use these, otherwise it's not going to fill your contents page up for you. So I'm going to have a dedication and acknowledgements. Sometimes people just put acknowledgements. It's entirely up to you. Um, sometimes people put these in boxes. Again, that's up to you as well. So I, 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 I'm going to keep those two, the abstract and dedication, on two separate pages. And now we're going to create our contents page. So I'm going to insert a page break now. Let's move that up. And to create my contents page, um, actually, first of all, we need to do uh, add some page numbers. So if we just go on to insert and page number, and I want to make sure that I've got them. I'm going to use them bottom right. That's my preference. But again, that will be uh, a conversation you might want to have with your tutor or supervisor. So now I'm going to create the contents page. So we need to go into references at the top. And on the left hand side here, you'll see table of contents. So, and there's a, a few different options. I'm just gonna go for the classic here. Um, and you'll see straight away now that the abstract and the dedication acknowledgements have been picked up in my, uh, in the contents page because, the fact, because of the fact that we, um, Put those as heading one so anything with the heading one will go in here now okay so i'm going to start uh typing in my main heading so we'll come back to that contents page so i'm going to now insert a page break and we're going to start on the main headings of this, of the dissertation the first one being um introduction now i want to use a numbered system so what I will be going, how I'll be doing that is going to multi-level list here, which is just to the right hand side of the bullet points and your numbered system. And I'm going to use uh, this heading, the what heading one, heading two, uh, or 1.1 1 .1, I should say. Um, what you've got here is a numbered system with some writing. So I'm gonna pick on that. And what you'll see on the tab here now Heading one has got a number beside it. So it's automatically given me a number three. Let's just leave it for a moment. Let's just type in introduction. That's going to be my heading. Now it's the number one, number three because it's changed um, my abstract numbers here. So what I'm just going to quickly do is remove any numbers that were there. And this as well. Okay, so what should happen here now is it should change that to number one. So sometimes you'll get some little glitches with numbers. If that happens, go back over and look to see where numbers have been put. So I've got my introduction here, and the rest of the dissertation up until the end of the conclusion should just uh, generally, it, it, you may put it on separate pages or you may just free flow. So that's something you need to speak to with your supervisor of what they recommend for you to do. So I've got my introduction, my next um, core heading, so it comes under number two now, I'm using literature review. And of course, you may have subheadings within this as well. My next one is going to be uh, research uh, design and methodology. Now again, you may just choose to use research methodology. The titles really are up to you, how, uh, um, what you agree with, with your supervisor. So um, then I'm going to use, let's do findings, and then I'm gonna use discussion. And then I've got my conclusion. Don't worry about spacing. You can see it's a little bit uneven at the moment. It doesn't matter. And we'll leave, then we will need references, but these um, usually are on a separate page. So I'm gonna insert a page break. Go back to the ribbon, put this in here, references here. And then you possibly will have 
um, appendix as well. Now I'm going to go back up here. So when you start typing, so I'll just just a little bit of typing there. Um, what should happen if you notice? If I highlight that, it's under the normal area of that um, ribbon. This means it won't form part of your contents table. If you ever get stuck and it forms part of your contents table, it's more unlikely that you've got it on under one of these headings. That's what you want to avoid. Now, if I wanted to, under uh, research design methodology, for example, I might say research aim, um, I might say sample, it's just it's a couple of topics. Now, I want these to be headings, so I can highlight those here and I'm gonna use heading two. So that enables me to put some subheadings in. Now, as you can see, because I've got a, a gap uh, here, line space, it's given me enough number. I don't I wanna get rid of that. So here we go here now, and then I can type straight away in under normal, and I can, I can write here as well. So to get your subheadings, you move to heading two. If you've got a further subheading, it would be heading three and, and so on. So that's how you would do that. Now I'm going to take you back uh, to the table of contents. Let's see what happens now. So you see as I hover over, it opens it, it kind of grays it out a little bit. If I click on there, you've got table of contents and a little arrow. So if you click down on that arrow, now you have the option of um, updating the table, so we'll do that. And it's going to ask you to update page numbers only or the entire uh, table. Let's do the entire table, get into that habit so you never miss anything. And what you'll see here now is an updated, very, very quick um, response to um, presenting this in the table of contents. And this means now if I click on one of those areas, I can find that straight away. I clicked on finders, it takes me straight there. So it's really, really easy for the reader to move about via your contents page. So this also needs to be the last um, uh, point that you, when you do your proofreading, let me make sure that you update your table for anything new that you've added. Now you may add some uh, figures, so or some tables, and if you do, um, let's just on quickly for you under. Uh, let's do findings. You might add a table in here. Um, let's just do something really super simple. Okay, so just got a little table come up here. Now I need to label that table. So if you go into references again. And if you notice, you've got an insert caption. So we're going to do this. And depending on if it's a figure or a table, this is going to be a table. I'm going to click on the options table. Let's change it. And it's numbered it for me. Okay. And I might want to add um, a, a theme one. Let's just add something here. Okay, and as you can see, it's put a label on the table, and then this later on can form part of your contents page. So um, it's always important to put a table. If you put figures, it might be a figure, but you go, as I said, references and insert caption. Now, if we go to our contents page, now you might decide that you want it on a separate page or it just follows on from the contents that you've um, on the main contents page. There isn't uh, under references, you can insert table of figures. I'm just gonna do that for you now. Um, I'm just gonna choose the options that are already there. Click okay. And then that's brought my uh, details of that table there. And if I click on that, that takes me to the table. Um, so re realistically, this is everything that you uh, need to know at the moment in creating uh, a, a dissertation from a presentation perspective. I hope this is of use to you and I wish you all the best. And obviously I do recommend that you do speak with your dissertation supervisors to ensure that you've got the right headings in place. This is obviously just um, some ideas of what you can do. Thank you for listening.